Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this conversation and we will be talking about a man's world. How interesting is it to talk about a man's world with a lady, with a feminist? But where else do you get this? Only here on East Square. And allow me to allow her to introduce herself. So kindly introduce yourself, tell us your name and what you do. Yeah, thank you so much. And um, I'm really glad to be in this conversation. I'm Naila Abdallah. I'm a human rights defender. Yeah, you've called me feminist. I also do that. But um, I am a community and citizen. And um, when I see justice happen to both gender, not only for women alone, but uh, that is where I rest my case. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, so Naila, kabla to ingia kwa mambo ya gender, oh, yeah. which I know you're very passionate about. Yeah. I want first of all to start for person who persons who've never been to Kisauni. You come from Kisauni. Yeah. Tell us something about Kisauni. Something interesting. Oh, yeah. always as um, when I talk about Kisauni, uh, of course, the only thing that comes in everyone's mind, not only in Kenya but the global itself, mm -hmm. they we've all we've been named to be a, a criminal, a terrorist. Uh, human rights violations, name of the bad or negative about Kisauni. Mm. Uh, criminalization of poverty has been a main uh, agenda for, for us people in Kisauni yeah. to be undermined for several issues. But all in all, we also have uh, us. We also have women. We have uh, big uh, infrastructures like here we are yeah. in Serena, Shanzu, it's part of parcel of Kisauni, but um, as usual, a uh, human being will always talk about bad stuff. Yes, but let me ask you, mm. Naila, as a resident, as somebody who perhaps I don't know if you grew up here, is it that bad? Kisauni? Yes. Yeah, it depends. We have seasons like any other seasons, but um, most of the time, yes, it's bad. And um, the reasons are there, the loopholes, the root causes. And uh, we feel like if something can be done, these things might end. Mm. But yet still, up to now, nothing has been done for them. As a human rights activist, yes. as a feminist, mm. and also as a young person, yeah. what, what are some of the challenges facing the youth of Kisaoni that you feel maybe leadership can solve? Yeah. Thank you so much for that question. Um, uh, there's a lot that can be done, but of course there's priori priority. Yeah. yeah? The priority uh, is um, at least the economic sustainability. Yeah. You know? Say is the youth attack history on Peleke seminar, on Peleke training, na how tampea do, ama how tampatea pesa ya kwanzisha beshara. But the only thing say is the youth they uh, really need it's economic sustainability yeah. issues uh, dealing with poverty you know those are the things that make them feel like now my family is here we've not even eaten for the whole day yeah. what am i doing as a young yeah. boy what do i do i've not gone to school and the lack of uh, literacy most of the time makes them feel like that way some they can't uh, kill or they can't do crime then they'll get into depression and they'll get into drugs to release their 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 their, their issues in their yeah. mind yeah. not knowing it's keep on increasing and becoming addicted onto that yeah. so we find there are a lot of issues that boys or young uh, generation in Saudi feel like there's more to be done for them mm -hmm. more empowerment more awareness to them at least to bring down to reality like you know, you say, Bila kusoma, yeah. akuna job tapata. Really? You give facts. Bila ku, kungali, so unataka kusaidia familia yako, yeah. then work hard. Mm. Try to do something on your own and see how things will change. Mm. So those kind of information, Hawana. For now, we have some youth that we've brought in on board. Yeah. Kwamba. You know, maze, uneza tanzi shabesha rako with just a one crate of eggs. Yeah. And you start earning from there. Yeah. And we have example. We are using them to change the other youth. Mm. So it's high time for youth not only to wait for white collar jobs yeah. to be employed. We are telling them that it's high time for them, at least for Jipate, they can do something on their own. We have youth who are doing art. They love art. Yeah. But where is the school of art for them? Mm. 
we have youth they want to do some vocational training where is it yeah as i was saying to my colleagues we don't have these social enmities we don't have parental mo role models yeah. but some, most of the families are gone some family breakups marriage divorces feeding kids to grandmothers by the time grandmother nakimbizana it's so hard. Yeah. So there's a lot in the society that I feel or we feel as Sisters for Justice we can do and trying to change the narrative. We need to change the narrative for our future. We are fighting for the next generation. If we really be living, if we will stay and live like that's yeah, yeah. going to uh, continue for the but, rest. But, but do you think the society still does that? Because a long time ago, Mtoto alikuwa mtoto wa kijiji. Exactly. Mama ya nani yange yaona mtoto fulani akifanya kitu fulani akamwacha. Lakini siku hizi mtoto wangu mtoto wangu. Mtoto wangu. Yeah, that is the the issues that we normally have especially when we have baraza. Normally have intergeneration baraza, not yeah. just baraza. Mm. We have different generation baraza whereby we sit down and talk tunaleta we bring back our culture. You know, I, when I was reading about the history in coast history in Pwani, there was several humanity, welcoming, hospitality, people talking, those things used to build the Pwani, the one you see it now. Yeah. But nowadays with different role mod models, different parenting skills, different issues, modern technology, online stuff, has really changed the norm they yeah. have really changed the culture mm. you know so it's high time for me i normally emphasize that yeah. as much as you're doing it right you see yeah. so these things we are bringing it back before the generation were like but we've seen it has not gone far yeah in fact, it has caused more harm. Um, yeah. yeah. So we are bringing that talk back. So I'm transitioning to, to a topic you like talking about GBV. Mm -hmm. How bad is it? Oh, GBV has never been, I don't know. I'm very young into this, but yeah. I've seen a global talking about gender-based violence for years. Yeah. Since I was growing and I'm still doing this, but, um, I think gender gender perspective, I'm not trying to cluster which kind of gender yeah. because nowadays we have several genders. Yes. If you are trying to list them, we will list them. <laughs> I think <laughs> But let's talk generally. Yeah. That um, gender, especially when it comes to a woman or a girl child, um, there's more to be done for them. Yeah. We are known for being vulnerable in the society. Yeah. I don't know, is, is it because of our nature or is it because of our vulnerability? Yeah. You know, sometimes I feel like, is it intentionally for women who cannot fight back a man? Is it intentionally that a crime can leave men and start uh, cutting women yeah. and child yeah. you know there are some certain things that you may think out of box and you plus one one plus one it counts back to yeah. two so most of the time we feel like women girl child are still not yet there as much as there is a campaign for the uh, boy child right yeah. but uh, for me i still feel like a boy or a man it's more of his nature is more born to be protector. Yeah. He's more on being himself a soldier. You understand? Yeah. Kijana ni kijana tu. Ata kama ni mdogo yuko kwa nyumba, you will know this is a boy who is here. But Mschana, you'll feel like she's still young, she's yeah. still inferior, she can't even express. Yeah. But kijana anasema hii ni boli yangu ni pe. Unaona it's natural. Yes. As much as there is that campaign, your boy, child, Nanina, we are not disagreeing that, yeah. but we feel like Mschana Bado Yuko still vulnerable. Really? Because, kama, ata leo nilikuwa nasoma, in the morning I was reading the story of that Dr. Dennis Mukwege, mm -hmm. who 
won the Nobel Peace Prize yeah, for yeah, the yeah. works he did at the Congo. Yeah. And you read that some of the things that were done to those women girls, it's and pathetic. girls, you you want to imagine, imagine what what was going through the mind of the perpetrator. Perpetrator. You know. Yeah. But do you think our society has pushed the man to that extent? Because we are having a conversation this month of the man's world. Yeah. And most of those atrocities are caused by men. Yeah. Majority of the sexual and gender-based violence. Femicides. Women are on the receiving end. Yeah. More women yes. compared to men. Yeah. Yes, there are cases of men. Yeah. That are... Few of them. Yes. But not caused by men, women. Yes, not caused by women, you would say. Maybe any accidents, maybe any mental issues. and all that. Yes, let me talk about that. Yes. And uh, this is a very clear in, um, example that you've brought about the doctor, the one who won the Nobel stuff. Yes. Uh, you feel like, we feel like, uh, and a good example is during this COVID-19. We won't leave COVID-19 away. Yeah. We understand COVID-19 really came in. We had issues about gender-based violence. Yeah. But due to COVID, things will become worse. Yes. We have a report that almost 90% on the cases of G uh, GB, uh, cases of status of human rights during COVID-19 mm. were gender-based violence. 90%. 90%. Why? Frustration for men. Wanatolea to my baby. Issues unemployment comes back home. Issues uh, how it, any sometimes we even feel like it's mental problem. Yeah. We also try to think about this man, this perpetrator. Yeah. Before Amefanyevi, what came into his mind? So no opportunity we bring on board on issues of mental health issues. Yeah. But none the same. That doesn't mean you take away someone's life. We've had like. Four or five cases of femicides. Wanawake mm. wamewawa. Why? Amembrusha mpenzi wake out of storing building. Why? If you don't want that woman, if you have issue with her, leave her in peace. That's what we normally advocate it for. As a man, umewana amefanya kitu baya amanini, leave out of that relationship. Yeah. There's no way you'll take his life away or her life away. So several gender-based violence has been happening. And um, there are several programs that I know across the world are being done to eradicate or ending gender-based violence. And the days uh, we have, we have United Nations days that are ending gender-based violence, which is on 25th November yeah. across the globe. We're trying to speak the message of hope to end gender-based violence, yeah. whereby there's no way, there's no right for you to end someone's life, for you to make someone feel like she or he is hopeless, yeah. to make someone who feels like she's no longer um, entitled to live in this world because of someone, yeah. because of being sexual harassed, yeah because of being physically uh, abused, because of being emotional torture, yeah. because of being um, being a gender in perspective. Yes. There's no one who is above the law, and there's no one who is below the law. As much as you're a human being, yeah. you are entitled to live by virtue of you being a human being. So gender-based violence should stop gender-based violence should end yeah. so long as we under, we take ourselves like human beings. Yes. So, so Naila, I want to, I want to, on that note, something keeps confusing my head. Maybe you might help me understand. What's the difference between domestic violence okay. and gender-based violence? Right. Thank you. This is normally the, the, the things that we normally do. Yeah. And domestic violence, it's normally how uh, it's the family issues yeah. that uh, most of the time it's more of physical gender based violence but uh, this it's happening directly to the person who are being uh, calling it as a family mm. domestic you know like for example milky pigwanam to injure that's physical yeah 
gender issue but yeah. someone my husband someone in related my father my wife I'm a bigger mamangu that is a domestic violence yeah. leading to gender based violence yeah. understand so domestic violence is also a form of gender gender based, based violence, violence. Uh -huh. yeah and um, we have category on gender based violence as I mentioned we have sexual mm. we have physical we have emotional, and papa do you psychosocial, you use emotional, do you emotional, and I don't remember, but there is another one yeah. which are four physical, sexual, emotional. I, I remember when I, I think of yeah. that, but the most one that we normally have, and the one that we normally know, yeah. it's physical, it's physical, and sexual. And sexual. sexual doesn't mean, um sex drama may find you something bad out of sex but there are several things that might lead to sexual violence for what for like, instance what like what? somebody would like, imagine things uh, yeah like, like rape, for example for rape uh -huh. like for example sodomization mm. like uh, defilement those are called uh, sexual violence yeah um like yeah th those ones or sometimes sexual harassment you know you're placing your you're going somewhere someone is starting to sexually abuse you yeah. eh? you we understand these things like uh, domestic workers i mean maids mm. they, they face uh, sexual harassment and um, sometimes they face a lot of challenges when they're in their homes mm -hmm. yeah so we have that, we have physical, whereby it's physical, you've seen how someone have been beaten, yeah. how someone have been stabbed, how a woman or a man has been, been done something physical harm yeah. to them. So Laila, we also I, have uh, yeah. uh, psychosocial, we yes. have emotional gender-based violence. Mm -hmm. This is whereby we're now bringing it to one board. As much as there's someone who can hurt your feelings, Hurt your capacity of thinking, hurt your self esteem, yeah. hurt your thing has done a big harm to you. I take a warning, but the impact, the push factor that has brought into your mind, it's also violence. I want to transition to the key thing as we come to a close yeah. of this conversation. Yes. Today, on this square, we, this month we're talking about a man's world yeah. and we're trying to look at what is it in the man's world that causes the, that imbalance in the society yeah. that a man has been a victim of very many accusations issues, yeah. and yeah. issues mm -hmm. and you from where you sit as a feminist as a you said you are a f Wom f women hrd woman uh, hrd woman human rights right defender, defender. Mm -hmm. I would want to hear from you. Mara nyingi watu wanasema wanaume squeezy. Wanaume squeezy. Wanaume Do you think it's true? Wanaume squeezy amebadilika. I don't want to bring contradiction, but yes, what I can say in nowadays men, I don't know what's wrong with them. Sometimes we personally I feel they're also human being. They're undergoing several depression, mental illness, but Tunasema, that's not the reason for you to come up and start uh, beating or start uh, losing your responsibility as a man, whereby you're supposed to have your responsibility. We have several homes that are breaking up er almost every now and then because of misunderstanding, because a man feels like a woman is or she's not a human being. Yeah. For example, on issues, many issues, we normally face them, especially in the offices, yeah. that the husband is not taking their responsibility. Where do you think your family is going to? You see, when a woman is trying to ask, when a woman is trying to seek for clarification, unapatambwana, he's on top, what do I need to do? What are you? He's using his, um, his muscles, or I don't know what, to start beating up the woman. But at the end of the day, you are a man. You are supposed to protect your family. How comes you're not doing that? When you're being asked, when you're being told to do that, family brings up together those issues, you're being like trying to put or undermine the man. But that's not the case. 
the case is a man needs to understand he is being born he is being born to protect what the other woman the wife the family the sister the mother yeah to kiss him up other gender doesn't mean your wife alone yeah so ni lazima mwanaume ajitambue kwamba mimi nimezaliwa yes i'm a human being but i'm born to be a protector not a perpetrator not um oppressor you see not uh, you're supposed to be a friend partner eh? we need to communicate with our family sometimes we are all human being but your gender perspective the way you can handle stress is different from the other gender so we need a society or a place or a community where i can sit with my husband i can sit with my brother and talk a healthy conversation without any harm there's no superiority somewhere you know your issue ego men who normally have issue and the superior in this house no one can say this those things ndo zinafanya people collide mm. in the home but, but, but what about the instances where people talk about provocation i was provoked she did this she said this but also the burden remains with the man what what do you say about that no I mean, normally as a human right defender usually we cut across we don't just only rely or defend women when they're in wrong no we also try to make women understand as much as you're in the, with this man he is also your partner he is also a human being we normally try to mediate we try to and uh, make them understand he's also a human being as much as you're provoking her, him but there's more room for you to do more and uh, we normally give um, psychosocial support to our women and make them understand that men also need some care we've seen the online campaign mean men need this men need, which is true they are also undergoing several issues outside when they come in they are supposed to be in a peace world that's the small world but sometimes tunapata us women we provoke we try this we do this we do that yes we understand but at the end of the day we need to put our differences aside hmm? once you see your partner as a human being those issues those atrocities those feeling superior it will, it will be aside believe me you're seeing your wife as a human being i'm seeing my husband as a human being hiyo issue ya kusema huyu ni superior huyu ni ego huyu ni atani provoke those things comes outside that's why we feel i feel personally if we take each other as human being understands him he understands me then things might turn up well that's where we see that uh, for my my campaign is like i bring the men on board whereby we've been having women empowering and women empowerment but who is empowering this man biggest question we yeah. ask because we empower this woman that has been my talk we empower this woman when you go home don't allow this don't do this yeah. don't do this yeah. don't do this it's your right when he touches you that's a physical assault what 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 but they are going back that's why i think there's high time good program to bring men yeah. on board make them understand how these women are their rights and their rights yeah. to harmonize the situation as we conclude yep Naila, i know we can talk about this topic I for know. the whole afternoon i know and 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 time is not on our time side. is not on our side but when i when i think about that there were a lot of programs that were geared towards the girl child empowerment and empowered the girl especially mm -hmm. the girl in the urban center mm -hmm. but did not talk about the boy mm -hmm. so today we have an empowered girl who is also back to that society and supposed to be married with this boy who is not empowered who is not empowered who was not told anything that the girl was told yeah. inside there how do we move forward what is wh what do you think from where you see i think there is a need to change we there's def, se, several uh, strategies i remember when women was trying to do a women leadership in some political and saying there's a he for she strategy yeah that we need men to support women in politics now there's high time also now we are saying urban 
girl child that's being empowered is coming back to this normal so it's high time yes for boy child to be empowered and uh, it's starting right from the home see the program you're expecting like being called for conference being called it's starting from home yeah. as parents you also have a right to take your plate to the kitchen but tunapata these things is still at home these things we've been born we're raised with it that a boy child cannot do a home stuff why but it's high time to change if you're buying this for your girl you're also buying this for your boy See, you have a child, a child, a child, a child, a everything in the house. You are leaving the girl child here. Those are the program, sustainable program. You are doing something for your your, your children. Do it equally. See, you have a child special because you are a boy. You have a child, you have a child, you have a child, you have a child, you have a child. Those things need to change. Do you think the African culture also disadvantages the girl? Of course, yes. Then, then, yeah, then. when we see such kind of things, we feel like we are putting these men or putting young boys coming, this young boy coming up into different parental raised them, beginning in the African tradition. But at the end, it's causing harm. And then, and our baby, and our, those are the same thing. Beginning this baby, I'm empowered to a certain family that has shown equal in the family. I know I'm equal in my father's house. The same is being done to my, my brother, but akikuja kwa bibi ama akikuja kwa olewa, things are different. Mm. So we need to change the, the situations to well, avoid the easy. Eh? Is there hope? Where do we start? We start from where we are. We are, we, are. we should have a men supporting women, a women supporting men. We should have that um, empowerment, both of us not only for girl child alone but for the boys child and uh, together not for women alone but bring on board the husband and men on board for them to be empowered that's why they he for she so i think yeah those are the things that we need to come up and uh, we'll be all in equal all in level tell me about family the last family how important is the family as a unit of the society it's a very in helping in this gender conversation yeah it's a very important tool institution. We understand it's the, the longest institution that we can go into. And uh, we find out um, there's um, more statistic shows there's a lot of family breakups. There's a lot of family issues that are making the society to, today to be where we are, to be a society of fasting for peace. A society thirsting for, I mean, security issues. A society thirsting for solidarity. Why? It's because of families. We live a, a family with a mother alone. We have single parental that are struggling outside there. An example, I'm this, um, myself. Now, chia familia mama na ototoote. Where do you think that family will go? Where do you think that children will do? It will reach a level the woman should be exhausted. Do whatever you want. That's why we are there as Sisters for Justice, especially in Kisauni. Almost out of 10 families, families, only six are breaker. Four are there. That's a very minimal. Sometimes even eight. Where do you think these children are going to? That's why we normally try to bring family together. Even if there's cases, there is issues, we mediate. We tell them these are the factors. Once you come to the house, where do you think our to sit our to end You think what to call a president, I'm a police, I'm a uh, in a good uh, institution? No. So these are the repercussions. We give them facts. Unapata family pale, even if they wanted to break up, they wanted to do a divorce, they sit down for the sake of their children. Naila, thank you so much. Thank you for your time. Ladies You're and welcome. gentlemen, because of time, we have to let Naila go, but we will be surely uh, look for her, bring yeah. her here to finish this con conversation because issues of gender can never be ex explored in one sitting. 
So thank you so much. We wish you the very best in your endeavors. Yeah, thank you so much. Pass our regards from his squares to the rest of the team at Sisters for, for Justice. justice. Yeah. And you've said it's an entirely female-run yeah. organization. Yes. Can I come for internship? Yes. Oh, internship. Yes. We'll check about Can I be that. the only man yes, yes, interning yes, there? Can. Yeah. You can, but um, we are still trying to to change. Eh? Yeah. We are still developing it, but right. um, it's high time to mix the gender. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. This is still a conversation on the man's world, and you've heard from uh, somebody who advocates for the rights of the women at the grassroots level. Naila Abdallah, a human rights activist focusing so much on women issues in Kisauni, uh, the coastal region of Mombasa. Thank you so much. We'll be sure to, to join her sometime soon for our conversation. She's mentioned a date on 25th of November that is supposed to be a... End gender-based violence. UN and International Elimination of Gender-Based Violence. International Elimination of Gender-Based Violence date on 25th of November. Let us join together for that conversation on that day and check out what they are doing at, at Sisters for Justice. Say a word, like, subscribe to their channels. And of course, we welcome you to do the same for us at E-Squared. Thank you so much. And until next time, have a lovely day. Blackboard Music.